Those little kiddos already off to school this week. Book bag check, pencils check, immunizations. Well, joining us during National Immunization Awareness Month is Dr. Sarah Ritchie, General Pediatrician in the Department of Pediatrics at MUSE Children's Health. It's great to have you. Thank you so much for me, having me here. Absolutely. <laughs> you know what? So immunizations, um, several years ago, there was a lot of controversy around immunizations and the connection that some critics and parents were making between getting shots and inoculations and their children being on the autism spectrum. Mm -hmm. So are, are we kind of past that? Have we realized that there really is no connection there? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. It comes up all the time. Uh, but yeah, we've had extensive research to sort of disprove that original theory um, yeah. that came out. So just thousands and thousands of review cases and looking back at the data over and over again over the last many years mm -hmm. to disprove and and show that that is not a relationship that's not a correlation that's not a link and it's far more important to get those inoculations rather than not because your child will be left susceptible to any number of diseases so so what is the battery of shots that typically children get yeah, um, that's a great question. So it, it is an, a, a, quite a list, mm -hmm. but the good news is, is that we break it up. Most kids get the majority of their vaccines in the first two years of life. And it's one of the reasons, in addition to checking their growth and development, one of the reasons why they come in so often. Um, and so that's so we can split them up so that they're nice and safe and we just booster the effect of them so that that immune system can respond. Um, but the list. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so vaccines that we recommend. So we recommend vaccinating against hepatitis B, mm -hmm. hepatitis A. Uh, we do a DTAP or a TDAP, depending on what age you are. But that includes tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis, which is whooping cough. Mm. MMR, which is measles, mumps, and rubella. Varicella, which is, which is chicken pox. Um, and then we also immunize in the younger kids, Haemophilus influenza B mm -hmm. and pneumococcal. And then we have some other vaccines that we give in the teenage years, which would include meningococcal vaccines and then hum human papillomavirus vaccines as well. That's right, HPV. That's yep. more or less new, I would say, within the last decade or so. Yeah, um, yeah. It's uh, It's been around for about that long, maybe a little bit longer. Yeah. Um, we've changed the vaccine schedule for it a little bit. It used to be in a three-dose series, but now you can get it in a two-dose series as long as you start it um, before age 15. And what are the risks of not inoculating your children and for some parents, caregivers, to rely on herd immunity to keep their children safe? Yeah, that is such a great question because First of all, we know vaccines are safe and effective and they save lives. So as a parent myself and as a pediatrician, we know that the one of the most important things we can do to protect our children is to vaccinate them. But to your question, the other great thing that you're doing when you vaccinate your children is that you protect children who can't be vaccinated. So by creating that herd immunity, folks who are fighting cancer, mm -hmm. who are immunocompromised in their chemo, they can't get vaccinated and so by vaccinating your children, you're also protecting them, which Absolutely. is wonderful. Let's end on COVID because, yeah. of course, this is something that's come up for everybody in the yeah. last couple of years. And for children specifically, we've seen those ages getting younger and younger as to who qualifies for shots. Yeah. So is it still recommended? And what is the earliest that a child is allowed to or recommended to get a COVID vaccination? Yeah, um, so great news. <laughs> we pretty recently opened up vaccines to six months and older. So the CDC recommends vaccinations for eligible patients who are six months and older. And both Moderna and Pfizer have vaccine series uh, mm -hmm. for that age group um, that as young as six months. Dr. Ritchie, thank you so much for your oh, time. Appreciate it. You're very it. welcome. We're back after this.